Hi, I'm Miranda Bailey, and I'm the director of Greenlit. Hi, right, Miranda. So, um, given the fact that uh, the, the subject of Greenlit, um, everything's going green, it's really hip and everything like that, I mean, what was really the main inspiration for the film? Um, well, you mean the reason why I finished it and decided to have people watch it? <laughs> uh, um, just because the inspiration, I don't even know where that came from. But, you know, I, I think that there's a lot of, um, of us as filmmakers out there who are touting ourselves as green. And um, I just wanted to show that, that, that I think that there's a lot more we need to do in order to claim that title. Um, and even the little bit that we can do, I wanted to shine a light on how it's really challenging and it takes a lot of work to do that. Now, touching on that, um, it really seemed like, uh, you know, you, you come to that road where it's like, you know, we can be green and put forth all this effort and then you kind of feel like, is it really worth it? I mean, like, how did you feel when, when it really came down to that push versus shove situation near the end where it was like people were kind of bailing on the whole thing? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I think that inevitably, uh, you're making a movie, what it's going to be about is making a movie. And that any kind of initiatives that you're trying to do, whether it be a green initiative or something else, is always going to be a side thing. And so, you know, one of the things I point out in Greenlit is that if it's really important to you to have a green set, then you really have to work hard at, at doing that. You constantly have to be reaffirming to the crew that this is what you want to do without... Um, you know, regulating them, you know, without, you know, forcing their hand. It's so, it, we're, we're walking this very fine line as filmmakers and producers who want to have green initiatives of, of uh, encouraging as opposed to uh, demeaning someone who, who may not have the time to, you know, walk over to the recycling, you know, because he has to get back to the set and he throws his bottle in the wrong place or whatever. So, you know, for me, what I really wanted to do is I really wanted to show the realities of the situation because I think that there are just so many people out there saying, oh, well, it's really easy to be green and all you have to do is recycle and all you have to do is eliminate water bottles and all you have to do is not accept these kind of things. And that's just not realistic. And um, I think it, it needs to be realistic. And I want it to be realistic. And so how do we go about doing that? Is really, how, how do we go about taking the steps to get where it is as easy as everyone says it is. Now, um, touching on that, uh, you as filmmaker, producer, you know, when you're dealing with a budget and everything, and now that you've experienced that, I mean, not in a social, social consciousness type of way, but like as, you know, an industry professional, you know, do you think when it comes down to, you know, 30% higher costs in some situations, would you go one way or the other? Well, for me personally, I'm always going to choose, if, if, I, if it, I can, if I do have a choice, I, I personally am going to choose the, um, the, the greener way to do it, um, and, I, and I've had to, to do that, but um, I've always heard from a lot of people that, oh, you save money if you go green, and I was interested, obviously, as a business person to see how that would work, and what I've found, not just from greening the River Y, but greening Super or Every Day, uh, or even doing some great things on our movie answers to so nothing, is that at the end of the day, it is not saving us money right now. Um, whether we have to hire a dishwasher, an extra dishwasher, because we don't want to use uh, styrofoam and paper and whatnot in, in the craft services line, um, that's, that's someone else you got to pay, that you got to bring on to wash those dishes. Um, if you want to have a green set PA or a green consultant online on on your on your set to take care of the trash and make sure it gets recycled, the money that you might save because you're recycling and, you're, and that's cost less when you take it to the dump than trash, you you are paying the green PA or the green consultant. Um, so you know there's these. Uh, there's these other systems out there where you can be online instead of giving off uh, paper products and stuff like that. Um, I'm trying to remember what it was, Synchronize we used. Uh, and that was great. You know, there wasn't as much paper going back and forth. There wasn't as many PAs running back and forth with spending gas. But we have to pay to use that service. So right now what I'm finding is, is it's kind of a wash. You know, it's kind of equal. 
And so if it is a wash, then we should be doing that. You know, and if, if it has to cost a little bit more, then if we can, we should. But sometimes you can't. Now, do you think that uh, the green movement in the film industry is going to come organically, or do you think that it's going to come to a point where somebody's going to find a way to make it profitable to be green, and that, unfortunately, being the reason that people make the movement? I think it's going to take a really long time for, uh, for anything to be profitable as far as it being green, um, but I don't think that's what it's about. I think it's, you know, how can we go about causing less waste and causing less damage and not not um, and not cost too much to do that you know what I mean but I don't I don't think it's the right thing to do to just throw a bunch of crap out because it's easier to deal with than it is to take it to film business recycling or or give it to goodwill I think that those things have to be thought about in the beginning and we as filmmakers kind of owe it to you know everyone to do that and we need to do it more now um obviously like there's probably already the label being thrown around about green light oh it's that green movie now it's you- kind of the antithesis <laughs> which is i actually it's funny because i have i have a lot of people who are a little bit angry that I'm not being green enough or that I'm, I'm, I'm showing what the problems are. Maybe I'm being discouraging and I'm not trying to be discouraging. I'm trying to be, I'm trying to bring up the problems that are out there and the realities of the situation so that we can address them and fix it. So uh, if you had to kind of sell your film to an audience in like one sentence or two sentences, I mean like what, what would you describe it as right away? Well, I think Greenland is is funny, and I um, I think a lot happens to the crew and to the green consultant on the movie that is, you know, sad, la- sad and, and, and ironic, and, and it makes you laugh and think. And I think anyone who's interested in making films will like the movie because it's about making movies. And anyone who likes the green, you know, element in life, or considers themselves an environmentalist, I think they'll also like the movie because it's it's about the challenges of, of trying to do that. Now, um, it takes obviously a lot of commitment for somebody to jump into a dumpster. Now, I mean, like, uh, do you think? Because uh, I, I think one of really one of the the more endearing things of the film is seeing the green consultant like really challenge her ideals and. You know, think like, what am I doing with my career right now? I mean, like, uh, you know, do you think that uh, the commitment is like really like you know worth it? And do you think like, I mean, especially I don't know how well you know her, but like, I know her pretty well. Um, you know, I think that only Lauren can really answer that question for herself about you know, is it worth it for her? Um, I think yeah. what she's doing is worth it for me. You know, I, I mean, I'm I'm psyched that she's doing what she's doing. I don't know how long she'll do it. But, um, but you need to jump in a dumpster to make it really happen. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you are hand-sorting trash. That's what you're doing. Now, on the flip side of commitment, did your husband really bail on Inconvenient Truth like that? Oh, yeah. He doesn't like, he doesn't like, uh, yeah. Al Gore. <laughs> but he does, he's very pro-environment. So, he, he's just, you know, he's just has other political views. Now, I don't know how much press, uh, you've done for the film, but, like, uh, What's probably like one thing that you haven't really gotten a chance to say about Greenlit that you'd really like to tell audiences? I don't know. <laughs> Tough question, right? <laughs> I haven't really. I just made the movie, and you know, I'm just excited to have people watch it, and, and you know, I, I just want people to do two things. I want them to think about, you know, what they're doing in their life, and you know, what we can do to help change a little bit, and I also want people to laugh. So what was the experience like for you being that, like, all-around, like, uh, official QB of the movie? Uh, what do you mean by QB? Like, uh, you know, like, official quarterback, like, when you're playing a pickup game, you know, you're everything, you know, because, I mean, yeah. you know, you, you put the whole film together from top to bottom, so. Yeah, it was awesome. Are you yeah. kidding? It was the best, you know? <laughs> I got to I got to work with Mark Lesser, who's a great friend of mine, and a super talented DP and editor, and, um, and I just had a great time. I really did. I learned a lot. Now, um, 
if, uh, if has it, uh, I, don't, I don't know, has it screened yet? This was the premiere, yeah, at South by Southwest. Okay, um, how did, uh, how do you think that the uh, audience reaction was, and how, did, how do you think the film screened uh, with the audience? You know, it's always hard to tell with your own work, um, and only, I mean, I, it was sold out, which doesn't mean a lot, because I think all the films are sold out here, <laughs> so... You never know, like, oh, does that mean there are people interested, or does that just mean it's rollover people? I don't, I don't really know. Um, I think you can tell from the P, from the Q and A, like, how many people stay, and if that is how you can tell, with ninety percent of the audience or maybe more staying for the Q and A, I think that that maybe people liked it and it's for a conversation. I don't really know. I haven't gotten reviewed or anything yet. So <laughs> um, now. Uh as far as like uh, DVD release or anything, are you um, thinking about doing uh, environmentally safe uh, packaging? Oh, for sure, like absolutely, yeah. Um, also, too, um, is there going to be uh, anything else to accompany the film on DVD that you know uh, that you feel should be said about the green movement in general, or even just like the film? That's a good idea. It's possible. Yeah. I haven't really gotten to the point to of thinking point. about distribution yet because it was one of those things where I just made it and then got into South by Southwest and was like, oh, cool, now I get to show it to people. I haven't thought about like the selling of it yet, even though you know, I, I obviously want you know, to sell it. I mean, in an ideal world, PBS buys it. You know. Now, um, what you set out to create at first and what it developed into as the film went along, would you say that that was pretty consistent, or did it no, become something completely it was totally different? different. Um, the very first idea was that it would be a, a little DVD extra on the movie The River Why. It would just be this little side, like, oh, look, we greened our, this is what we did to green our film, and it would be like five minutes long. And that's when I thought, you know, oh, we're going to have organic you know, makeup, and we're going to have... Uh, biodegradable everything and biodiesel and Priuses and everyone's going to use Burt's Bees products and you know I just thought that's what the way it was going to be but in the end I was like oh none of that's happening we're just recycling and and not using water bottles like how can we call ourselves green and I was like this is kind of interesting and then the crew you know wasn't as receptive as as I thought they would be or as anyone thought they would be to to the whole um you know, greening of the movie, and I thought that was really interesting, you know, and I thought, gosh, why? And then I realized, oh, they have a point, you know, wow, it, 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 it does kind of affect their job, and and so then there was that, and, and originally I wanted to, you know, meet with uh, Warner Brothers, because they've got some initiatives that they're doing, and they're building solar panels, and I, I went through the stages to, like, get an interview with them, and at the end of the day, I couldn't get them, couldn't, you know. They, they, they didn't want to be in the documentary, so I didn't have that anymore. And then at one point I wanted to talk to Mary Nichols, who was the one who did the study about, you know, the film business and the environment and what wasting, and I, I wanted to sit down and talk to her about what's changed since she did that study and all that, and I, I, couldn't, I couldn't get her on camera either. So then I had to make these choices about, well, what could I get? And, and build my movie around that. And then that's, that's how, kind of how, how Greenlit came about. So it's essentially three acts. It's me going, why would we ever green this film? To finding out why and what films do and what certain specific films have done. Uh, and then it's pre-production. And then it's production. And so it, it had a nice flow. Now, like, because uh, we were watching it and uh, discussing, I mean... The, the term green, the, the green movement, it's such an ambiguous title to throw out there. Um, I mean, do you think there is a solid definition? Like, when, when somebody says, oh, my, you know, like, if we said our website is green, I mean, do you think that anyone even really has an idea of what that specifically means? Because I don't. I didn't. I don't. I think, uh, I think it's very general. It's a very broad term right now. And, um, and, and I, you know, but... I think we should, I think we need to have some sort of definition of what it is. Like, for instance, lead, you know, uh, that's, that's a, you have rules to be a lead, a lead building, lead hotel. So we should have rules within the film business of, of, of what is green if we're going to call ourselves a sustainable film or a green film. All right. Um, well, thank you for sitting with us. We enjoyed the film and we look forward to uh, more screenings of it. Thank Thanks you. Thanks so much for seeing it.